I really love the symbolism um, in this movie regarding change and how the storm really represents life in general. Um, change is inevitable no matter what. Every second you breathe, something has changed. And the way you live your life and the way that your life turns out all depends on whether you are the one that decides to make the change or whether life decides to make the change for you. And that's kind of what the storm represents is, is when those who decide to change for the better, um, they're able to be lifted into the storm and into this other dimension or realm, whatever it may be, into enlightenment, whatever you call it. Um, and those that allow life to force them to change are clobbered and destroyed and, and, and killed. Um, because their, their psyche hasn't quite reached the required point yet. I've applied for many of Bill Zabub's films on NY Castings. I found out about this job at nycastings.com. I found out about this through NY Castings. I saw it on their um, daily sheet email that I get. Um, I play the character of a girl who meets Bill at the library, and we're both researching the strange weather phenomenon, and we both just got out of relationships for different reasons, and we, we hit it off. We have a lot of fun together. We joke around together, and we fall in love, yet we can't, we decide that we can't fall in love. It's a really complex story. It's a really heartbreaking story. Bill really saw who I was as a person, what my experiences when we interviewed, he got to know a little bit about me and I really did relate to the role of Heather. You know, I have been married, you know, for six years and it was great to um, relate to being in a relationship with somebody for that long and feeling like you're, you know, you lost the love and it's just like a roommate situation. And um, it was quite funny actually, because it's scary how much I felt like a part of her. I'm similar um, to Melissa, actually, I think, in the way that she thinks and the way that she um, analyzes every thought that comes into her mind. She doesn't just have, have them as passing thoughts. She, like, speaks them and, and, and works through her thoughts in, um, in a very similar way to, to the way that I do. And um, she also likes verbal sparring with like the the her knowledge and I don't know if I should be embarrassed to admit that I do that too but I do it. <laughs> uh, she has a like a dry sense of humor which I like I like a lot and she's a good listener she has strong opinions uh, which I can relate it to she has a lot of cool things about her. My character in the movie sacrifices herself to save Bill. I don't see me doing that. <laughs> Melissa met Bill knowing of that he's a poet and, and she met him with the intention of, of falling in love with him because she had these preconceived notions of who he was. And she was very persistent once she figured out that he's not at all who she preconceived him to be. She still wants to get to know him and, and continue this love affair that she felt that they should have. Um, and that's very different from what I would have done. Like if, if this was Brielle in the movie, I would have probably stopped trying to uh, get to know him when <laughs> in that way when he uh, first joked about his impotence. Because um, not, not the fact that he actually was impotent, but because if like you love somebody, you love them no matter what happens. But the fact like it was like the, the humor, I would have been like, mm, not my kind of humor. <laughs> I don't think I would try that hard for a man who wasn't <laughs> into me. Once I received the sides and I was able to read them, um, it really attracted me to the role more because I love how um, dialogue heavy it was because that's how that's kind of how I talk in real life and how. Um, the conversations are more like stream of consciousness, the things that you think about, and they're very similar to some of the conversations I've had. Um, so I was able to relate to Melissa really well. 
Well, my reaction to the script when I first received, I was pretty impressed because the writing was very good. Bill actually discouraged anyone from doing this movie if it was something we were doing just to put on our resume to get other jobs. He only wanted people that were actually passionate about the story and the creative project. And I think that's really cool because it is a dialogue movie and, and that's not something that is popular. It's something I actually like and, and admire um, just because it's what my personality is drawn to. But um, I thought that was cool and then it led to him asking me what I would change or what my ideas are on the script. And, and it, was a real, it was really cool. Was I worried about shooting in a hotel room instead of shooting in a studio? Um, a little bit. I have to say I was a little nervous because I had only met Bill's bub at a bar that he had me at Dingo's Den in Clifton. I met Bill somewhere in New Jersey. I think he was Clifton. I don't remember. It was like a bar thing. Um, it's unusual. Um... Yeah, I was just, you know, I said, let me see what's going on. I'm usually not afraid to go to try different things or, um, and it was a public place. If he said, oh, come to my apartment, then it would be different, but it was like a bar and the bartender had a dog, which is kind of <laughs> different, <laughs> weird. Um, but it was pretty cool. He he was a he's 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 a very in, interesting person. He has uh, he knows a lot about a lot of things, if you know what I mean. When the filming style was described to me, I mean, it obviously brought more of an awareness to me that I like. I don't I don't didn't know Bill before this, um, and being alone with him filming. I, I was aware of it, but I got a really good vibe from him. And, and I mean, I, I carry mace with me everywhere I go just in case something happens. Because I've been in some interesting situations. So uh, <laughs> I figured out, if anything, Bill's great. You know, he would never do anything. But if anything were to have happened, yeah. <laughs> Bill Zabub's directing style is kind of awesome. He is not like any director I've ever worked with. He's kind of like a Woody Allen. Well, Bill's directing style. Let's think for a minute. Uh, he's pretty cool. He's very like laid back. Um, he has this memorization technique that I never used before, which is, uh, it's like uh, the secret. So you gotta work with him in order to learn. Beelzebub's directing style is really laid back, um, but also to the point, like he already has everything mapped out so he knows exactly what shots for what lines. And it goes a lot quicker than um, some of the sets that I've been on where the famous quote comes like, hurry up and wait. And I didn't have that to do. It was, it was a lot more efficient. He explains every single thing before we shoot. Um, and he does everything. Oh my God, he does everything. Can you believe it? Um, it's just uh, crazy, right? Because I'm just like doing my lines. He's doing his line, he's setting cameras, he's setting light. A lot of scenes that would require like me to laugh or where would we, we would end a line and then pick up and I would still be laughing. He would have to do something silly or stupid to pick up and continue my laughter. So he would do things before saying action or, you know, just do things to try to get me to crack up and to make it believable so it wasn't a fake laugh. And he did all kinds of little tricks like that. In directing, Bill likes to make a lot of jokes, which is really funny. Um, but sometimes he makes one right before like he says action and uh it's he makes it for the purpose of getting me into um the way i need to deliver a line but sometimes it was too much and i, I couldn't do it and i was just like uh what? <laughs> i've seen a lot of bills above movies I'm a, I'm a fan of his movies and you know the la or in dick shark he was more of a romantic studly type whereas in this one he kind of takes a different approach he's not necessarily like 
a dork or a loser or anything like that, but he definitely isn't as suave or as charming as some of his past roles. So it's a little bit different, and I think that it's good. It's a nice change-up. It's something that we haven't seen before, so I think that the the variety and, like, the goofiness in some of the more intimate scenes, whereas they would be, you know, more intimate before or just goofy and silly now, I think it's a refreshing change. It shows that um, Bill is at peace with his ego or doesn't have an inflated ego for the fact that he wrote his Bill character to be so neurotic and lame (laughs) and he was comfortable playing that. He didn't feel like he had the need to display himself as as the macho hero. Um, So, yeah, it, it brought a little bit of respect to him. When I first saw the sex scene, I didn't know what to think, actually. I didn't know if it was porn, if I was going to be naked the entire movie. I really honestly didn't know. And when we shot it, I really got to see the difference in the characters of Bill and Heather and how Bill is a total goofball and is impotent. And Heather is, you know, she's worldly and, you know, loves adventure and wants to do things and not just work in the same field as Bill and spend all their time together and feel like they're constantly on top of each other. You know, she needs to live her life. And um, the sex scene was so fun and freeing. And, uh, you know, Bill (laughs) playing with the remote and doing stupid things actually uh, made me realize how different their characters really are. But Heather, you know, has that funny side to her too because Bill Bill brings that out in her. I had predicted it to be more of a love scene, but it really was just like an epic fail. Like they had that thought kind of like, Melissa obviously admired him as a poet beforehand, so she had this idea in her mind of who who Bill was, and upon meeting him, it's like, this, this guy's a fool. He's nothing like he is in his writings. Um, so it was a lot, lot less romantic than it seemed. I had I had an idea reading the, the pages, what it would be, but then he was very clear and very respectful and very like open to suggestions. So it wasn't like a creepy thing at all. I was a little nervous about it, but when we actually shot it, it was comical really. I thought it would be kind of like a little scared, nerve wracking, but it was really fun. And I got to be myself um, and free in the moment. So it was good. Is Bill Zabub accident prone? Yes, Bill Zabub is accident prone. He ran into um, everything many, many times and hit his head over and over again. And it was really funny because I um, I quoted to him, like, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, but he still didn't learn to watch where he was going. He constantly knocks into light fixtures, the boom mic, at least 10 times fell on him or on me. Um, The cameras were falling, the lights. We had to... (laughs) Okay, we did this shot, and Bill added something to the end that made me laugh. But that wasn't going to match up with the scene that we had done so far. And so what he did, he added on a shot where he was just walking away, leaving, And then instead of looking where he was going, he was looking at me and he completely wiped out. And it was hilarious and it made it all work perfectly. What are my favorite things about today? I really liked how relaxed it was. And this was the first time I had ever been deliberately asked not to memorize the script before coming in. Um, and it was hard to not let myself do that because I'm so OCD and I wanna make sure like everything, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I did memorize a little bit, but I tried not to. And it was easy because of the way he had it set up and, and done it. I didn't need, like it sounds crazy, and um, but I didn't need to have it memorized, it was cool. It became so much more, way easier than I ever could have expected it to be because 20 pages is a little intimidating for me and probably for anyone. Ugh, 24. Wow, we shot a lot today. Yeah, it was the most that I shot in this 
amount of time. Yes, absolutely. I never had worked with any director that would make me memorize on the spot. They would always have me prepare the lines in advance, which I'm used to. And actually, I, I, I have to say I like this method better because it felt natural. Yeah, he sort of make it. He sort of explained it to be more like a game than you know, to feel the pressure of having to memorize it. Because when you feel the pressure of having to memorize it, you're more likely to screw up. But when you think of it like a game and you're practicing back and forth and you're practicing together, then it helps. It makes it, you know, come a lot easier and come more naturally. So the way that he approached, you know, me trying to remember or remember all these lines, it really helped me. And Bill said in telling me about his... Uh method for memorizing like the the Simon game way where he would take a chunk and memorize it and then repeat it and add a chunk and I had already I've um already learned how to memorize that that's the first way I actually learned how to memorize I I grew up playing violin um Suzuki method and and when I was in elementary school we had to memorize um each piece in the Suzuki books and that is exactly how I think it was my mom that taught me how to memorize that uh I haven't done the stunt scenes for the movie yet and i i'm i'm really excited for it because he's using his like super duper movie magic making skills and he's taking a scene well i don't want to say too much about it but at the same time like what i picture in my head i'm sure is a lot different than what he imagines it's going to be like You hit me right. Are you? Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I told you I didn't want to. I knew I would hurt you so much. Are you okay? Sorry, I don't need that eye. Uh, <laughs> are you okay? That's a, no, it's not like I'm filming Thursday and I and a black eye would be. A, actually, a black eye would work. Uh, Not a black guy, a black eye. Oh. Because I did get knocked out by you. There's a bone right there. Yeah. It's all right. Tender spot. <laughs> <laughs> I will have a limited edition of my special artwork of this film. So if you want to support me, I'm on three different social medias. I'm on Facebook, um, Erica Lee Bozeski. I am also on Instagram, Sing for Karaoke. You can follow me. And I have a website, ericaliebazeski.com. So if you want to check out my pages, that'd be awesome. You can maybe friend request me uh, as a fan. And I'd love to keep you in the loop of things with this film. There will be 100 special edition limited Kayla Brown covers for this movie that can only be bought through me. And you could either find me, I go to a lot of horror conventions, I'll have them with me at those, or you can contact me through Facebook, and I would be happy to let you in on some of this movie magic. And I would love for you to buy a copy for me, and I would sign it for you and all that good stuff. But 100 special Kayla covers, only 100 will exist in the entire world. So, yeah. Primarily, I am a musician, um, and I've had a couple songs on the Billboard charts, um, but that's like my 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 day to day thing. And I I love acting, and I've acted my whole entire life. And I'm really grateful that Bill gave me the opportunity to be in this film as well. Um, but like I I uh, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, and I started singing when I was like two, but um, professionally singing and recording under AGP Records when I was 15, just turning 16 and uh, moved to New York City. Um, I recently released my first album ever back in June, um, which is on iTunes and, and you can check out all of my stuff on uh, brielleonline.com and follow me on social media Instagram and Twitter is at Brielle underscore music. And Facebook is facebook.com slash Brielle music. One word. Um, and reach out to me. Let me know that you've seen this. I would love to talk to you guys. And uh, I respond on everything. And all my social media is actually me doing it. So.
Um, there's one particular scene in which, you know, it feels above he's supposed to act like he's going to fart. Now, me knowing his, you know, methods and how he, you know, can take a different approach sometimes, I didn't know if he was actually going to fart. I wasn't sure. He covered my face with a pillow, so I thought, okay, maybe he really did. I don't know. I'm a little frightened. But, um... If he did, it wasn't too bad because I didn't really <laughs> notice. But then again, I wasn't going to hold it against, you know, it's very possible that he did. But I feel like I would have known if he did. Only because, you know, apparently you definitely know when he does. There, um, there was a situation where he farted on an actress in the past. Poor Miss Angelina Lay. And I remember she made the comment of how horrible... And how, oh, what did she say? Disgraceful it was of him. So I feel like I feel like I would have known if he actually did, whether or not by the loudness of it, because you could definitely tell, you could hear it in this video. Um, also by the you know repulsed look on her face. I feel like I would have known if he actually did. So I think he was courteous enough to just pretend fart for me. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ever concerned about the non-traditional filming. I've been in a lot of situations, I guess mostly music videos where the filming hasn't been um, traditional, but I, I that kind of intrigued me too because I like doing things in a non-traditional way. I like, you know, they always say that you have to learn the rules before you break them, but then the ones that get places are the ones that do break them.